Hey, Stereo Asmuth here, and I've got a cool DIY, DIY project for you guys. Um, so we all know that power affects audio. Power, like dirty power from switch mode power supplies. Uh, we want to get rid of them. Wall warts, cable warts, all that kind of stuff in our amplifiers for our uh, digital decks, for our DDCs, for our streamers, for like whatever is in our audio path we want to like get rid of you know switch mode power supplies as much as possible right like we don't need them we're like get rid of them please um but then you know to build a linear power supply for everything uh that can be consuming that can be expensive and you know to build a clean linear power supply i mean for all your dc devices um that could also get costly it can get expensive but um and then uh you know but i'm not talking about i'm just talking about dc power supplies i'm not talking about ac power supplies if you have like a device that runs on um like ac power like most shit devices i mean i talked about that in you know one of the uh things that i you know um uh bought from ally express and I'll post the link to the video over here or maybe over here, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll post a card. That's what their YouTube calls them. So you can watch that video if you have like a shit device that runs on like 16 volts AC. And then this takes 16 volts AC and, you know, gives you, uh, uh, it goes through like a different sort of, uh, you know, filter basically. Um, but it's still like the linear power supply, the changing from AC to DC is still done within the actual like shit boxes. So this is the switch mode power supply takes AC and automatically changes it to DC within that, you know, wall wart or within that cable wart. And then you get a DC output like 12 volts or 24 volts or five volts. Uh, even USB, you know, has five volts. So what do we do then? Like I said, you can either build a linear power supply, uh, also referred to an LPS, or you can use one of these boxes. And this is a what is referred to as a noise nuke. And what it does is it basically negates the effect of the switchbone power supply to give you a pure, like flatline DC power for your devices. And just to show you the effect, this was this box was designed and uh, or the circuit was designed by uh, a member of the audio community and uh, super best audio friends by Atomic Bob. He is very knowledgeable about electronics. He tests electronics um, for a living. He actually like, you know, looks at the very um, minutia of uh, not just audio stuff, but for a lot of industrial um, electronics. And he knows his way around. So he, he looks and probes at these things all the time. And he came up with this box to kind of, you know, to get rid of like, you got a switch mode power supply. You want something better. This is a cool DIY box to where you don't have to build a linear power supply. Um, so what does it do? So let me show you his tests and I'll post a link to the description and to the instructions on how to build it. Um, he was very kind and gracious to, you know, give us the circuit and to show us the test results of what this box can do. So here are the tests. The top is actually a DC from a switch mode power supply. The bottom is the output from that power supply. Uh, after going through the noise nuke okay so that's pretty unbelievable i mean just look at the top wave and how like wild it is now if you have an oscilloscope and you put you know your probes on that dc you may not see that but atomic bob has very sensitive equipment i mean he tests this equipment for a living um for other companies to make sure their stuff is built right so here is another test of an actual linear power supply. And the linear power supply, you can see there's tiny little dips in there 
as it's regulating the voltage. But then it goes through the noise nuke, and bam, you get a flat line. Um, so, I mean, because obviously if it can deal with this, then it can deal with the little bit of wave in there. So that's pretty cool. Well, what is this circuit? What does it take to build it? Well, here is his schematic, okay? And we're talking about the positive and the negative input directly from the wall wart, okay? The actual DC output of that wall wart. And it goes through this Hammond 155B choke. If you don't know what a choke is, it's basically an, an inductor with a magnet. Um, it basically filters out all like the high end, high frequency stuff. But when you combine it with the capacitors that you see here, there's two 6,800 microfarad capacitors in parallel. Um, and then, you know, so those two things combined together give you a filter that filters out all that high end um, crud, basically from the switch mode power supply, giving your device a very, very clean input without having to build a linear power supply pretty daggum cool right here's another schematic that i drew out um just so people that you know familiar with electronics you have your inductor and then you have the two capacitors and you get your your dc output so what do these boxes look like right like what is it what what, what are we talking about here so this is a box this is the actual uh this isn't bob's box but this is uh, another user's box and basically, he has two barrel um, connectors. Uh, one, the top one is the input, and the bottom one is the output. And you see it's connected to the 155B, 6 millihenry, 2 amp uh, inductor. And then you have the two 6800 microfarad, uh, 63 volt uh, capacitors in parallel. Pretty daggum cool. Pretty small device. Pretty low parts um and you just put it in a little project box secure everything down the hammond um is uh secured by you know screws and some nuts and then the you know you just use some hot glue or putty um or whatever you know i've seen zip ties i used a combination of zip ties and um hot glue and i'll show you mine in just a moment so if you want to look at mine this is the way mine looks. So these are the barrel connectors that I was talking about. So basically you would take your switch mode power supply barrel connector, and then it would go right into here. And then your output would go from here. And then that would be the other thing. You would actually need a, you know, barrel connector to barrel connector cable uh, to go in, you know, into the device and then out to your uh, equipment. So, but let's take a peek on the inside and you can see I've got, you know, basically the same setup. I mean, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You've got input um, on this side and then output on this side with the capacitors um, connected uh, in parallel with everything um, with the circuit, you know, in line with the circuit. So the negative, even though that this case is a little more robust, it's been all and the, the jacks that I've chosen are metal and they're basically the same. Like this connection to the plate is the same as this connection. I probably don't even need this wire, but I went ahead and did it for safety's sake just to make sure the negative is always uh, connected. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Uh, I don't have this labeled, but I just know that with the feet down, uh, the left side is the, uh, is the input and the right side is the output. So the let me just show you the parts list of what it takes to put one of these together. So you have the six millihenry two amp choke. So yes, it is limited to two amps. Okay. So if your voltage, like you know, there's not a lot of stuff that runs like over two amps. There are some things, some amplifiers, some big amplifiers that run on DC, some cable wart stuff that runs over two amps. Um I'm looking at you, Monoprice and Monolith, um, the you know the Cavelli stuff. But even those are not really recommended to use with a linear power supply. 
So I just wouldn't worry about that at all. The um, but there are other devices that you know you can benefit from. You know, you, that's that's still a lot of power. Now, some people say, well, what voltage are you limited to? Okay, so you're limited to two amps, but what about like your voltage? Well, I use 6800, uh, like th that is what like 63 volt uh, capacitors, and that is what Atomic Bob recommends. Now, you could use other you know voltage uh, requirements because that is the max voltage for the capacitor so i mean you could use 12 volt you know you could use you know 32 volt but that's going to limit you on the input because your capacitor value you want to be double whatever the input uh and output is going to be so say like 63 volts i'm probably limited to about 30 volts or maybe 32 volts on the input um but you know if I, you know, say that you want to build this device for just something for like a five volt device, right? That runs off USB. I would not like just put 10 volt or 12 volt capacitors in there because what if you're not using the five volt unit anymore? Then you've got to either change the capacitors or build a whole new box. So you want to build some versatility in it and it's not going to hurt anything to build, you know, higher volt capacitors uh like in your box and they're not that more much more expensive anyway if you're already building a box is big enough for the um for the choke then you know you're gonna probably have room for uh, a couple of those capacitors and then you're gonna need like an enclosure you're gonna need panel jacks you're gonna need the power plugs you're gonna need a couple other power plugs the actual like male ends that that go so you can build the cable the cable you can build out of anything that has two conductors. You can use mic microphone cable. You can use um, uh, you can use speaker cable. Um, just basically something you know that has you know two wires that you can connect to have the you know the DC rails that you need. Um, and you know, and then the two you know barrel connectors uh, that you would connect to the you know to the actual box. Uh, you're going to need, you know, a couple of screws and, and knots to connect the um, the transformer because if you look at my transformer, you can see that it's it's screwed in with uh, a couple of screws on the bottom and there's some nuts. That's what screws it down because you don't want that to rattle around. You can use like hot glue or putty uh, or some other way, you know, to, you know, connect the box together, but you don't want to... Um, you know, you do, you want to secure everything down, uh, you know, uh, by a good amount because, you know, I can shake this around and you not hear a thing because everything is secure. So you want everything uh, to be in there very secure. So and that's pretty much it. So he built this box. Now, this his prices are a little bit probably off because this was from 2017. Right. Uh, so he you know, he put forty dollars on it probably in today's prices being you know 2024 uh you know might be 50 52 uh might be a little bit higher depending on you know if you want a different enclosure if you want like um um you know different connectors or or whatever and then you also have to add on those barrel connectors he probably has some like lying around but you know you probably want a to build um your own they even make that you can get uh even from like amazon you can have these barrel connectors and they have two uh like screws that, that you can just like put two wires in just like some cheap speaker cable or something like that some like real you know like 18 gauge uh or or you know a speaker wire and just you know then do that for the other end of the barrel connector and just use that uh, and that's completely fine to use too so but this is a really cool uh device once again i'll post a link in the description from super best audio friends um because i mean i think that this kind of device is going to give you you know if anything in your audio path to give you better background to give you better inner details um better like low end response um because that filter connected like i said with the you know, with the capacitor and with that inductor just like takes all the noise out and gives you just like a, a pure, 
you know, uh, DC um, to deal with. And then you don't even need, you know, uh, like, you know, power, um, um, power conditioners and all that kind of stuff. So even, even the dirty power that you're getting from the wall takes all of that out of the equation, just gives you pure DC. Um, so a lot of you are probably saying, well, why don't, you know, other people do this? Why don't other, uh, companies just built in, uh, this stuff? Well, that's because like you saw the parts list, right? That's an extra like $50 that they would have to put in to the device and the space and all of that kind of stuff. And a lot of times, a lot of devices need more than just one uh, power rail. They may need three or four or five or whatever. So not everything can have like uh, the cleanest power possible. Now they do. I have seen, you know, small inductors in electronics where they're trying to do kind of the same thing where they're trying to filter out the high frequency and kind of negate uh, the kind of noise uh, that's, you know, inherent in you know, regulating or, you know, in the switching. Um, but you can only do, you know, so much of that, like internal in the device. Um, but this is a very cheap and easy way to give you a linear power supply without having to build a linear power supply, right? It's like kind of a passive uh, way of giving you a linear power supply. And I really like it. It's one of my favorite DIY projects. And this is why I wanted to talk about it. I wanted, you know, other people wanted to, you know, bring to light because this has been part of the, you know, super best audio friends, um, like nomenclature and, and is very popular, um, on that site. But I think it's something that, uh, you know, many of you, uh, probably don't even know of, or even aware of that you can, you know, build something like this. So, if you do build one, please let me know. If you have one, please let me know in the uh, in the comments. Um, I would love to hear about it. And uh, like I said uh, again, if you want to know more information about it and you know uh, want to see even more test results from Atomic Bob, look in the description. There's a link to the uh, to the thread that has everything about the noise nuke in there. Um, it's very you know quick and easy to read you could probably read through the whole threads in like about 20 minutes so it was really really cool so i hope you guys have fun hope you guys enjoyed uh this you know diy project and we'll talk to you guys later bye